And this is a good example of how to make a worm trap with a cardboard box because right here we have already seeded worm piles. So we know there's lots of worms in here. We've let them go in here. If you bring the camera up close to this, um, we've taken the bin with the, re the red worms that people raise in the bin and we've actually introduced them into the ground there. So what they're doing is they're chewing up these compost piles and they're big and fat and healthy and they're permeating the sub layers of the soil right here and bringing nutrients to all of our plants here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where there's worms in your yard present already under a tree in the leaves anywhere. You're going to take a cardboard box. You're going to strip all the tape off of it. You're going to make sure it's a cardboard box that's hopefully something from an organic produce or something. Try and do some research and find out which boxes. Some of them have fungicides in them. But even that is so minimal, it shouldn't even really affect anything in there. Um, so you take a cardboard box. I like to throw the peanuts I just harvested out of the ground that I'm telling you guys to let go back into the soil. Throw it at the bottom of the box to entice the worms and then fill the box with horse manure. You can put a little bit of compost in with the horse manure in a layer and then put some more. Composted horse manure? Or just uh, semi composted, just because it's been sitting around. But uh, it was just taken right up from the stable, so it's not really composted. Um, so after I do that, what I have here is the other thing we're doing is we're shredding coconut leaves now. Every week we're going to be in here shredding coconut leaves because we got a chipper shredder from uh, Dave and um, Cliff. So I put some coconut shreddings on the top to cap it, and I just keep it wet. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on that. Somebody write the date down, and we're going to see how long before that thing is at. Yeah, we're going to leave this for a few weeks, and we're, every time we come in, we're going to monitor it. And we're going to start counting our worm numbers that come into it, and we're going to see what kind of worms we attract to it. We have three different types of worms left here. We have Amnethus gracilis, which is uh, the first worm I showed you here. Let's go through this one more time, actually, and we'll identify them really quick. This worm right here, if everybody can step up to me close, this is a red worm. You guys hear the term red wriggler a lot, but there's several types of red worms. Red worms are usually subsurface worms. They live on the surface and they travel underneath the surface leaf litter and they bring it into the first few inches of the soil. They incorporate organic matter into the surface of the soil and minerals. This is called fatida is the name of this worm. And he's identifiable by one major thing that separates him. If you look at the bottom, he's got a flat underside where the other red worm, blue, Wymanalo blue, is completely round. This guy actually is almost square shaped. He's got a flat bottom and he's got a really yellow tail and he's red. A Wymanalo blue won't be as fat. It'll be more of an even shape all the way through. It'll still have the fat thing, but it'll be round its entire body and it will have a bluish sheen to it. And that, that's called a Perionyx excavatus. And that's also called a Wymanalo blue. That's not the one I'm showing you here. This is a red worm composting called Fatida. This worm doesn't migrate much in a bin. If you leave it in a bin too long and it becomes too toxic, it will die off. Where the Wymanalo blue will actually migrate out of the bin and leave if it gets too toxic. So it's good to use them all. I have these set up so they can also migrate in and out of the bins and by raising them in the piles they can move away if it gets too hot or toxic for them. They can move wherever they want to to make it uh, happen for themselves. And these worms are the rainbow sheen worm you see in your yard that gets really big. You see them in your garden a lot. This guy goes 15 feet down and makes vertical tunnels. These tunnels allow for uh, roots to penetrate into the mineral zone because they have less resistance. Oh, excuse me, they channel water as well. Um, so these guys bring up minerals from deep and feed it to the other worms on the surface. This is the Amnethus gracilis. They get big, like this big and about a quarter inch thick. Unfortunately, there's no big ones to show you. You can take a five gallon bucket, you can put holes in the bottom, and you can fill it with compost and horse manure and the worms will come up into the bucket to get it and you'll trap worms in there and they'll also take some of that out into your garden. So I love cardboard boxes this way to do it this way because they'll completely inundate and fill with worms and then you can just take that whole box and sit it right in your garden bed. And then they'll come in and out of that box and it's a way to supplement your garden with food. It's really simple and you use an old cardboard box in it. Can you put compost in there? You can put compost in there as well but make sure you layer the compost with the horse manure so it's inside it and it's away from bugs and everything, it'll be broken down enough for the worms to get it. 
You can also inoculate it, grab a couple worms out of the garden, throw them right in it to start the process out. And when they, they'll make worm castings in there and the other worms it'll help them smell it even more. You water it once in a while, it's great because it just drains right into the bottom. When you put it in your garden bed, you water it, it just leaches the worm castings into your garden anyway. It eventually deteriorates and it's a pile of dirt. So you can't do wrong with it really. Um, and what better way to cardboard, most of the time if you lay cardboard down and you're trying to compost it, it doesn't get good saturation or it blows away or it's just laying down everywhere and you have to cover it with something else. When it's in a box like this, it's always wet all the way around it and it breaks down really nice and evenly. When you're done with it, what you do um, is you can take a box like this, it's already been filled with worms, you've had it sat up here, it's got tons of worms in it. Um, basically, take it afterwards, cover it right up with grass and water that. And before you know it, that whole mound will just disappear right into your garden and just be the whole life that feeds your garden as well. So that's one way to do it right there. That's a worm trap.